Welcome to a new video in my home automation channel and today I'm going to review a product which I've received from banggood.com so thank you for banggood for uh, supplying this product free of charge for this review video and just to summarize it uh, with one single sentence this Blitzwolf SS1 smart switch is almost like a son of basic so it is an inline switch or let's say an inline breaker that you can control over the Wi-Fi network so it uh, goes onto your wireless network uh, there is a, an app provided to for this product and you can control this device over the app from anywhere whether you are on your home network or you are on mobile data and uh, to be honest I have ordered this one or we arranged the delivery of this one probably back in November October time and I think for some time it was on pre-order so I think this is probably a fairly new product from Blitzwolf, but probably not so new by now. And that was one of the reasons why the uh, delivery was delayed. Also, the other reason could have been Christmas. But I've received it now, so I'm just going to do a, a fairly quick uh, review video. It's going to be quick, not because there is not much to say about this product, but it works pretty much like a lot of other products that we have seen on this channel. Uh, so it would be easy to compare the features to those. And when we talk about app, I also need to mention that just like with many of the other uh, Blitzwolf products, there is a dedicated Blitzwolf app that you can use to control this device. But this device also controls Tuya Smart and also the Smart Life app. These two later apps have the advantage that they are supported by a lot of other manufacturers. So if you are planning to mix Blitzwolf products with some other products, then probably you are better off with Tuya because then you can control them in a single app. So we are going to use the standard stock firmware. We are not going to make any modifications, just going to show you the basic setup, the use of the product and the various features. And to compare it to a son of basic, let me just show you how a basic release 3 looks like and how this Blitzwolf unit looks like. So it's a little bit shorter. It's probably the same width, sorry, same height. And uh, the width is also a little bit smaller. And in terms of the physical layout, as you can see, it has an input on the, well, if you hold it like this, then the input is on the right side and the output is on the left side. There are two screw terminals on each side and you have this flap that you can um, open so you have access to the screws and that also provides some physical protection so you can't reach the terminals very easily. But the way you should use this device is that it should be hidden, mounted somewhere where it's, it cannot be reached, especially not by kids. Because these live terminals are somewhat exposed and the whole setup doesn't uh, have any protection against strain. If you are going to use it as an inline switch, like similar setup that I have here, so I have a bulb connected on one side and the plug on the other side, uh, you know, there is nothing stopping that uh, uh, cables to be um, torn out of the of the case so definitely in in a proper installation this should be in a box with some sort of strain relief which is holding uh, both wires just to make sure that it's uh, you know it cannot be stripped from the terminals the unit comes in this box which has the usual blitzwolf branding and if i look at the other side the only thing that worth mentioning that this unit has a 15 amp relay so it's at 240 volts it is rated for 3300 watts just as a reminder the son of basic has a 10 amp relay so it can theoretically switch higher loads as well but all the other sp uh, specs are pretty much the same uh, what we would expect besides that we get the usual accessories that you, you get with all blitzwolf devices so you have this feedback leaflet uh, which tells you how you can leave a feedback and how you can reach them on email or Twitter or something else. And there is also this very small user manual. It looks quite thick, but it's because it, it's in three languages. So you get it in English, French and German. And it goes through the setup process, how you set it up in Blitzwolf, but it's pretty much the same in Tuya as well. On the device besides the two terminals, there is a button here which says reset, but that also acts as the on-off switch, just like you have on a Sonoff. And you also have a hole uh, under which there is a status LED. Actually, probably there is two status LEDs because it can be red or green, or if both of are lit, then it gives uh, some sort of uh, pink or purple color. And the documentation tells you about all the different light patterns that it can emit based on the you know various status whether it's impairing mode or whether it's connected to the wi-fi network 
I've gone ahead and added the device to my Tuya app as well. So as you can see, it shows uh, BWSS1. I haven't changed the name. I just wanted to keep it the same as the, as the device itself. And because it's connected to the internet already, so there is a solid blue indicator light, I can just turn it on. And then it goes to purple. So most probably the blue and the red is uh, lit at the same time. And I can also turn it off. And I can also use the button. It's a little bit recessed, so it's hard to press, but you can control it locally as well. When you connect the device for the first time, it goes to pairing mode automatically. So setting it up is really easy. You just click on the plus button on the upper right, and then you select the device. And I could have used a switch as well, like a single gang switch, but I decided to add it as a breaker. As you can see it here, it says breaker and in brackets Wi-Fi. If I go into the details of the app, then the control is also very uh, similar. Uh, if you have seen some of my other videos on various uh, other uh, Zemi Smart uh, Tuya products, and you know the basic switches usually have this view where you have a big button that you can control the device. You also have a switch button on the lower left, which acts the same as the, you know, as the main button in the middle of the screen. So it just uh, the switches the device on and off. When the device is switched on. Or switched off you can use a countdown so that's a simple timer so you switch something on you want to switch it off like a sort of like a sleep mode in a tv you set like okay i want to switch it off at well after 17 hours and 21 minutes and yeah so it's going to be off after 17 hours and 20 minutes besides that you can set up some schedules and these are timers that uh, when at a certain point in time you want this device to either turn on and off and you can set the time and the hour and the minute you can also set up a repeat so which days of the week it should you know that rule should apply by enabling the notification you can have a separate notification on when it's actually happened and you can set whether the you know at this point you want the device to turn on and off okay and that's, I would say, pretty much it. The only other thing you can do with this device is you go into the settings, which is the, the pencil icon on the top right. And you can make some changes here. So, for example, you can rename the device. You can, oh, you can set a different icon to it. I don't remember I've seen this before, to be honest. You can change the name and you can change the location, as in, in which room the device is located at. You can access the automations here. Obviously, I haven't created anything yet. And in the third party control, as you can see that once it is in your account and once you link your account to either Alexa or Google Assistant, you can control it by voice as well. You have the obligatory share option where you can share the device with other Tuya users. You can create a group as well. So let's assume that you have a big room where you have multiple of these Blitzwolf controlling various slides. If you want to switch them on at the same time or switch them off at the same time you can use this group functionality but that would make more sense with switches so you have two switches let's say downstairs and upstairs and when you you know you can operate the light with either of the uh, the two so that you can do with uh, groups the rest of the stuff is like you know feedback and update the firmware that would be all about the settings so the only thing which is left to do is just to look at the automation to see what we can use this device for and the last thing to look at is the automation and see how we can use this device for various automations. So I'm going to look at the actual automation, not the tab to run. So I create a new one and I want to see how, what sort of triggers I can use this device uh, for. So I'm just going to select when the device status changes and I'm going to select SS1. So I have, well, you have countdown for all the uh, all devices, but the only other thing we get with the SS1 is the switch. So we can set up an automation that uh, uh, triggers when this switch is getting turned on and off. So let's say if I turn the device on. And the next option is run the device. And here on the action side of the automation, you can always use the switch functionality. Okay, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I just wanted to show you the features. So in the conditions, you can use this device and you can use the, the triggers at when the device gets turned on or off. And on the action side, so on the task side, you can also set this device to either be turned off or turned on. 
And I think that would conclude my review of the Blitzwolf SS1 Smart Inline Switch. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.